Hey guys, it's Dania and welcome back to my channel. So I'm a second year medical student and I'm going to be talking about today why I want to do plastic surgery as my career. I'm 20 now and as far as I'm concerned, up until a few months ago, I was dead set on being a GP. Even though I had a lot of passion in surgery and I did really want to pursue that, I just knew that I wasn't, as bad as it sounds, capable of being a surgeon because there's grueling hours, you're on call 24 7, you can be called on at like 2am to conduct a 20 hour life saving operation and I was just like, mm -mm, respect y'all but that is not for me. <laughs> So I was looking at Australian organ donation and what specific organs you can donate from your kidneys to your lungs to your heart to your eyes and I came across an American website that mentioned donating your face. I never knew this was a possibility until I stumbled and actually like researched it and so I looked further into it. I looked at the previous procedures that had been done which isn't many. There's been around I think five to ten in America. I was looking at two specific procedures. One was basically the turning point for why I wanted to do plastic surgery, which was a young man. He had a self-inflicted gunshot wound in the face and he survived and so he needed a transplant to have a second chance at life. The second transplant was of a young man who had unfortunately been the victim of a mismatched attack where he wasn't actually the chosen victim. Um, he opened the door to his front house and a stranger poured acid all over his face and unfortunately he suffered the worst uh, degree burns on his face and needed a transplant to start over and get that normal face back. His procedure took 56 hours. I'm not sure what the other man's procedure took but I'll link them both in the description below. After seeing these, I knew for sure that I wanted to donate my face. I told my mum, she was super supportive about it. But the more that I thought about it, the more it didn't leave my mind. Everybody that I met, I would tell them about it. I'm sure I've told you guys about it or shown you guys. I shared it to my Instagram story, I shared it to my Facebook story. <laughs> I just posted it everywhere because I was so mesmerised by it. And obviously being a medical student, I was interested in the surgery aspect of it. And even though I never wanted to be a surgeon, I did always have a strong desire for neurosurgery. I remember when I was, I think, 13, I watched a brain surgery on YouTube and they like drilled into the skull, cracked it open. And the brain had like, it was, it was beating. It's like called binaural beats. So why plastic surgery specifically? I honestly am still trying to figure that out, but some of the reasons is because it's such a large breadth in the field that it is. So the reason being a GP and being in family practice always appealed to me is because there was such a large variety of things that people could come in with. You need to know basically every system in the body, you need to know all the mechanisms, and you need to have a sound knowledge of the entire body as a whole. Whereas on the contrary, an ophthalmologist will be super focused in the eye. Obviously, they'll have a great understanding of the body in general, but they're more about that depth in comparison to that breadth. Now, with plastic surgery, I realized after my first placement is that it's basically the same as a GP, but this whole new era of surgery is incorporated into it. It's incredible. Like I noticed, and even the surgeon told me that you need to have such a large breadth of knowledge and incorporate that into your hands and the skills you use operating on a patient. And I love that so much because I want to be in a field where I'll get something completely left one day and then completely right the other day. Somebody, if you guys haven't noticed, somebody that likes change a lot. So I do want a field that gives me the option of changing and subspecializing in multiple different things. So the subspecialty that stuck out to me the most when I researched into plastic surgery was a little subsection called the future of medicine under regenerative medicine. Now, when you click onto this, there's a selection of different subspecialties and interests. But the one that stuck out to me was, take a guess, 
hand and face transplantation. Now, when I saw this, I, I don't know, I just, you know when you just think you have a calling, as lame as it sounds, um, yeah, I definitely experienced one of those. My heart just like sank, but in the best way possible. It's like if there was a boat and you have a big anchor and there's gold on the bottom and when you sink it down, and it clunks on that gold and your heart just is so full. It's kind of like that. I, yeah, after seeing those transplant videos and researching into face transplants and then realizing that I could be a future surgeon that conducts those, I just found that incredible. I live in Australia and there actually isn't any face transplants done in this country. So by the time that I graduate, which will be in around 13 years, I will probably be in one of the first few years that face transplants are being carried out. It's something that I'm just so passionate about and the reason is because your face is something that you present to the world. It's something that everybody looks at, everybody unfortunately judges you on whether that's consciously or subconsciously and it's the way you hold your feelings, your emotions, you know that the way you express your language 80% of it is body language and a lot of that is your facial expression. So to be able to let somebody who suffered a traumatic attack or other trauma have their normal back, I think that's so incredible as a surgeon to be to have that ability. For people that have had gunshot wounds, have had acid attacks, have had trauma to the face, been eaten by a bear or a dog attack, it's so incredible to have that opportunity and that skill set to give somebody the gift of feeling normal again. So a week ago, I went on my first ever trip to shadow a plastic surgeon. It was Dr. Scott Ingram from East Brisbane, and he gave me such an incredible opportunity. I spent literally 16 hours with him that day, just going through consultations, going in the OT, seeing a BCC excision, and then going to a really prestigious dinner event for a plastic surgery company, which involved a bunch of plastic surgeons, fellowship students, and nurses. So I'll talk about all of that in my next video. So if you wanna watch that video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click that bell so you're notified when I post that third part of this video series. And give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Until then, I will see you guys in my next video. See you later.